what's going on everybody we're back here again uh day two of we're going to be finishing up the installation of the pentair uh easy touch automation system we're going to open it up because last time i made uh, uh i was thinking about this job and i'm going to make a correction on uh one of the uh, connections that i made for the interior of the, of the unit so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open that up and i'm going to show you the corrections that i want to make on uh, my wiring So I'm going to bring you guys in so you guys can see right here in this area. Okay, so <coughs> this transformer is the transformer, uh, it's the control transformer for all of your system that's up here on the top. Okay, now there's two ways that you can uh, wire up the control transformer. And it says it here, um, you can set it up through 120 or 240 line. So on your line side. So yesterday what I did was um, I pulled it up into the filter pump, but I don't want to have this uh, connected to the filter pump um, because at any time that we need to turn off the system or turn off the breaker, we'll have to be using the filter pump uh, breaker to turn it off. So the changes that I'm going to make to this is I'm going to put a dedicated circuit here on the bottom and I'm going to be adding another um, space here since we still have the space a dedicated uh, 20 amp breaker and I'm going to be running this and I'm going to be changing con the connections and running it on a 120 circuit uh, so we're going to be taking our connections for our control transformer out of the filter pump really I don't think this should have been that way anyways um, because on my personal pool, on my automation system, I don't have it this way, and that's what I thought about yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this out of here, and then we're gonna be transferring it to its own dedicated circuit. So, and we're gonna be changing the wiring diagram for the uh, 120. So it's, uh, I have mine connected here to the one and the three. And it was the black, this black one right here, and this yellow one. This, the yellow and the black was for the, the 220 setup. Okay, so we're gonna be taking that out of there. And the one that we're gonna be using now is more likely the purple one inside the booklet of the automation system it shows you that that proper connection for that I think it was on page let's see if I find it So right here inside of your uh, inside of your box, it should have came with the Pentair Easy Touch and Intelli Touch uh, control system for pool. So this is how the booklet will look. In this booklet, it shows you how the different wirings are supposed to be. And here on page nine, uh, it details you uh, and shows you on the system transformer, which is here, and the filter pump really is here. So it, told, it shows you the control transformer wiring. And right here, it says if you want a, uh, a 120 setup, you want to use your black and your yellow, I mean your black and your violet, and your yellow gets capped off. And if you're on a 240 setup, you use your black and your yellow on the 120, and you leave your violet off. So we're gonna be setting ours up. Uh, to be on an independent circuit here. Uh, actually, we have a uh, a uh, a twin stacker right here. Um, 
we're going to be utilizing one leg on the 20 amper right here uh, for the control setup on this twin stacker and this bottom one that we just uh, installed is going to be for our pool lights so we're going to be taking all the wiring out of here and we're going to be using our black and our violet for our 120 line voltage setup And your violet is going to be your common your violet is your common so your 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 black is your line uh, and again go back to the because you don't want to make mix up these wires it tells you very clearly the black is your 120 that goes to your uh, your circuit breaker and your violet is your neutral that gets onto the common side of your uh, panel here. take this lead off of the violet and we're gonna cap off the yellow so the yellow is not going to be used so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna actually put a white wire to the common and I'm gonna adapt it to our control uh, our control transformer just have to go get another another little jumper up See if I can put it through this.
Okay, so we finished that connection and we rewired the control transformer to his dedicated own circuit. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and label that. And uh, so when we go and label the board, we're gonna know that that dedicated circuit breaker is for that. We're just gonna notch this last notch out right here so that we can go ahead and um, have our space for the pull light circuit okay now um, yesterday got really dark on us uh, we couldn't finish up but we did uh, the last thing that we did was we ran our actuator automatic valve cables in through the panel and again where they comes in under under the the jacks uh, over here on the side these little uh, port holes here on the side it runs up in here we have our cables nicely tied through the low voltage side of the unit comes up and over and we have our cables nightly uh, tucked away and uh, all together here so that there's no tugging or pulling on the actual cable so <clears throat> we have our intake which is this cable uh, wire that I'm holding here uh, that's our suction side of our spa and it's tucked right uh, it's plugged into on the board right there where it says you know, just right behind it it should say uh, intake and then we have our spa jet side on the uh, return side so whenever we activate the spa this is where it uh, functions from okay so we got that plugged in there um, we have our antenna plugged into the comm uh, board back here and our pump on this other uh, comm port here. Uh, and this, this port is what communicates to the main board here on the front. So we got all that done there. Now what we have left to do is, uh, is actually we're going to be installing the water and air temperature sensors uh, for the unit. Okay. It comes inside of your automation box as well. And this is how these look here. Uh, this is the part number that comes in in case if you ever needed to replace them. It comes with uh, inside two sensors. They're both the same type of sensors, just wherever you plug it into. Uh, obviously, one of them is going to be, we have to drill it into the actual pipe. And that's why it comes with this clamp here. Uh, and underneath, we're going to go ahead and open it up so we can show you. So, both of the sensors are the same type of sensor, with the same number and everything. Um, doesn't matter where you use it at. And um, well, we're going to confirm that. I'm going to be opening up because I did see that they do have two different numbers. Um, so I'm just going to check in the booklet if they are uh, different. Other, other ones don't really matter. We're just going to be making sure. See, and this is the way they want you to do it in a two or three inch pipe. You got to drill a three eighths drill bit into the pipe and then your sensor goes in with the clamp around it. That's the way they want you to install it there. Just want to make sure it shows you where to plug it in. I don't think so in, in, inside here, it doesn't. This is just the different controls and where the different automation systems that they have. If you have a comp pool uh, to an easy touch, the wiring diagram, these are the, just the different wiring diagrams for the different uh, uh, units that they have. I don't think the actual sensor, uh, either one would work on either side, if it's air or, or water. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna simply Take out part one of the sensors, and we're going to do the air one. That's the easiest one to do. We're going to take it all apart. All these little twist ties. Okay, and then this just simply is going to go up underneath in the bottom of the. Uh, you guys it's gonna go up through the low voltage side right in here and we're gonna use these little back ports 
I like to do is I like to bend the wire, uh, the little wires, to push it through these little jackets that are here. Okay, and then I just basically have pulled this all up. And the air one is basically, you're just gonna hang it where it's gonna be up underneath the, um, the box here. And we'll just uh, lightly fit it. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this zip tie. I'm gonna run it through there. I'm gonna have it dangle right through here. If I can utilize this zip tie to attach it and have it hang there, we'll do the same thing. I think there should be enough space. Yes. Okay. So that's the way I'm gonna gonna pull it all through here. Let's see if I'm gonna like it dangling here you know and all this really does is it just collects and that's pretty I, I like that right there because it's gonna be sticking out uh, hopefully you can see that on the bottom so what I did was I just utilized this uh, zip tie and this is where I'm going to basically keep my my sensor tight right up in here. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. Now running the rest of the wire inside the low voltage side of the automation box. Doing the same thing, bending the wires and going through the, the jacket back here and running it up the side, pulling all the cable in. Nice and neat there, okay? And now, where this plugs into, you're gonna continue to run it up. So we're gonna continue to run it up in between here. I'm not gonna worry too much with that right now, just wanna get the end of it going through. I don't like, I, I keep the length of the wire. I try not to, uh, to cut it at all. Let's see if I could do the same thing and I may not be able to, I may, I may go ahead and take off this and Put them all together so where this gets connected into is right here on this portion of the board right here uh, you can see that it, this side says water so this is a two-legged uh, wire so it goes from the back side and this is where you would select if you have a water solar air so we're going to put our air one since this is the one we left hanging from the bottom of the box uh, we're going to select and right here open up these two sides i'm going to take this com port off and then put our wiring and then we'll do the same thing for the uh, water okay guys um i did find out there is a difference uh in these two the length the length of this cable is very short and the length of this cable is very long so there is a difference obviously you're going to want to use the shorter one for your air since if you look at the sheer distance of it okay it's going to hang right around under here so i'm um, just going to go ahead and i'm going to leave this in here uh, actually i'm going to have to take it all out because i got to run it back to where the plumbing is hey man it happens this is my first pentair easy touch that i've that I've installed but nevertheless you know it's a learning the learning experience but I got it going so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this out from here 
and pull it all out. And uh, well, basically I'm gonna add my, my air in um, and install the air one where I put this one. from the sheer length of it, of the wire, I am going to not be able to put it through that area of the, uh, the zip tie. So we learned something together. See? Now this one is just short enough just to be right where that's at. So the shorter one, you want to install it to the air side. Okay? So this goes on here. Like this. Okay. Yeah. So our air is onto the the two right uh, terminal blocks. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna install that right there. Probably gonna have to take that off because I want to put it through that thing. So, demonstration purposes, people. Demonstration purposes. So now we're gonna run. We're gonna come back over here, and I'm gonna show you where a good place is to install your water one. on the pipe the discharge pipe right here okay so we're gonna have this installed right up here on the top okay so here's where we're gonna uh, make our mark and drill our hole and then we'll be able to insert this and use the clamp that came with this little clamp. Put the communication cable from the heat pump to the automation system.
that sink. Not sure if it's here or uh, down here up there. I think this is the high voltage side. I think it may be in here if anything. Never done one guys. So you never done one, we're learning together. Yeah. This is the high voltage side. Let's see in here. Gotta be in this control board area. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be up in here, guys. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be connected right here. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna close up this bottom side. And we'll get to putting the connections here. All right, so um, we did need to have this other access port open so the wire can come through the uh, this side here, through the down jack uh, and into this panel and what I want to do is we're going to actually be rerouting it when it comes out of here. We're going to pull it down on this side and I have these little jackets here on the side like these little uh, uh, cut out punch out holes um, that I am going to actually be uh, probably just drilling a little baby hole through here because I, I mean I don't want it to go through the high voltage side uh, coming down through here. Um, so I'm just going to drill a little small little baby hole into this uh, little knockout. Um, well, we do have one here that, yeah, well, I don't have to drill it because I just found one here on the side and let me show you and it's uh, specifically probably made for uh, running your voltage wire. So let me take this apart so I can show you phone with me to get a little bit closer because this is where our communication cable is going to be it's going to come in right here so we're going to run it through back here and then down i'm going to route it around the transformer and down through this jacket hole, it has a hole down through, and I'm going to exit this little baby hole that's right here, and then run it along out and back to the panel. So we're gonna get that started. Um, and I'm probably gonna start feeding it from the bottom coming up, instead of pulling all the wire out, leaving the majority of the wire out here. You're gonna feel, you can actually put your hand around the back and come right in through this jacket right here and fish your wire through. And then up around the transformer. Okay, give it a little bit more slack here. cable there and then we'll be able to strip our wire we're going to be using the green and the yellow and attaching it to our com port uh, the RS485 connector and green and yellow uh, as you look down on it, um, you just match up the color. And if you don't have the right color, whatever cord that you're using, um, you know, just make sure that whatever color that you attach to 
technically the green side is gonna attach to the green side over there. So like, let's say if you only have a red and a black uh, and a blue and a, uh, and like say a blue and, a, and an orange. If you wanna use a red and a black, let's say put the red to the green and the black to the to the yellow and then over there you put the red to the green and the black to the yellow uh, it's just a color coordination of what uh, Pentair used and vice versa uh, with uh, also with Jandy and all the other uh, Hayward um, just as long as the cable is to the right on both ends to the right side on both ends you'll be fine and when you're doing your wiring or stripping don't leave a wire exposed. Keep the wire very close where there's no exposed wire coming out of the, the actual connector because that can pot potentially cause a, uh, if it touches the board, it can actually cause it to touch the board and fry itself or not communicate well. So keep that in mind when you're uh, splicing your wire. Okay, so we have that set. And we're just gonna route our wire down around, keep it tight and away from any other any other contacts. Okay, out of the heat, out of the heat pump. Now we're going to be able to carry this wire back to the automation box. All right, so we got our cable all ran completely, and the heater connection plugs in right here uh, to this jack and uh, that's all we got to do so same thing we're going to be splicing our wires we're only going to be using the green and the black I mean the green and the yellow okay it's all done there Put it up to the side. I'm not gonna need that much wire. I'm gonna cut these little ends of these wires a little bit better. This was a four wire connector uh, wire. I mean, only using two of them. And that's where your heater goes right there. So now I can nicely pull some of this back I'll pick some of this up so that we have number one we have some play and number two so th these wires are not hanging and pulling on the board but we'll give it enough slack so that we can uh, completely pull down the, uh, the front of the face plate and then we zip tying it all together Make it look all nice. And they're all like a nice professional look. How about that? So, I'm gonna go over again. We have all of our, our uh, relay switches here. Um, you basically gotta find the relay like this, the first one here is the filter pump relay. And you, you look at your board, uh, I mean, your actual panel here, it, it explains everything, guys. Um, you have your vol low voltage side with all of the connectors, say your filter pump, auxiliary one, auxiliary two, auxiliary three. This is a four function, uh, easy touch system. So five, six, seven, and eight are uh, not utilized because this board is only, uh, uh, or we only have four relays in here. You can adapt more later on uh, just by purchasing the relays and you attach them to these holes that are here on the side down there. That's where they uh, screw into. And then you can attach them to more of the jacks here. 
also, um, you know, you have it's your filter pump relay where you line, load, line, load, uh, and then your auxiliaries. You know, auxiliary one, we're going to use it as a pool, uh, our pool light. Auxiliary two, we're going to be using it as a blower. And you can utilize any one of these. If you have a two speed uh, motor, um, you're going to be going from your filter pump relay. You're going to need to have, uh, I purchased probably a two speed uh, relay um, that that connection is, is right there. Um, and here's the wiring diagram for everything. Uh, you know, you have your, uh, your low voltage circuit breakers right here. And that's what basically comes from the, the transformer factory wiring. So all this is pre-wired pre -wired from the factory. And again, here goes your uh, your intake return valve. I mean, your intake and your return valve actuators is where they plug into or any automatic valves that you may be having. Um, and then, you know, then you have, oh, that's gas heater. Oh, electric heater. So we got to make it different. That's gas, guys. Look what I just learned. See, just by looking at this. Huh. Okay. No, that one doesn't even go there. But I wonder. Hmm. I don't have that kind of connector. So how am I going to connect it there? I don't know. We'll figure this out. We'll see what we got to do. If anything, I'm going to... Contact my uh, contact my rep, but you know, nevertheless, you know, this is the general wiring of this system. We're gonna finish tying everything up here, and let's take a look at everything else that we got done. Guys, I stand corrected. If you just read, like I should have, uh, see it says gas heater, but if you read your two gas heater terminals for remote control operation or two fireman switch connection. So this will be our fireman connection um, from our heater. So we should be good in this aspect of connecting your heat pump or gas heater here uh, via the fireman switch. So I think electric heater, I think this may be uh, the little milliwatt heater uh, heaters. Um, and maybe when you purchase those, they may come with this type of little connector. Uh, I don't know, but I'm going to roll with this connector and we're going to see how it goes. So what we got uh, left over here was um, all right guys. So this is the moment of truth here. We got everything all wired up the way that pretty sure it's supposed to be wired up as I said before this is my first installing an easy touch but I've installed automation systems before the a lot of the Jandy iAqualink systems and uh, the Hayward uh, uh, OmniLogix and uh, ProLogix so uh, really no different um, just different schematics uh, different placements of where everything goes so <clears throat> we turn the power on and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we're getting the correct voltage coming into the main panel here. So we're gonna take our, uh, our black lead and we're gonna hold it up to the, uh, to the neutral side and touch one side of the leg. Make sure we got 120. Right now we got 122.2. And now we're gonna leave our black lead on the neutral. I'm gonna come to our other side and we have 121.5. So right there we got our 120 coming in. Now we're gonna take it off of our of our neutral and hit it onto our other leg. Make sure we got the 240. Right now we got 243.5. So we got everything going. We got the proper voltage coming in here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna power on our uh, main uh, board right here, and our display is gonna go on. Um, remember we have our control transformer tied into our twin double stack 20 amp. And we have it tied up to the top uh, stack. And we're going to flip that on. Boom. And we have display coming on right there. And then everything seems to be functioning right. Boom, there goes the air, 69 degrees. So we have our air temperature that's reading the, reading the, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get it up to one of these little, there, perfect little 
but we got our air temperature so we know that our sensor is working properly we got it tied into the right place now i believe we're going to have to start to program everything on this side so good news we have power uh, let's see uh, let's turn on the filter pump okay i'm gonna put it to service mode and let's see if we can turn on our filter pump go back over here there it is our filter pump is on and the antenna core is on so we know that that's wired up properly Auxiliary 2 for a blower. That's not turning at all because they have a switch. Let's see. Well, I never used a never used a blower before in this area, but we'll double check our connections and make sure that we have power coming in. Oh, dummy, 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 dummy. Gotta turn the brake on. Okay, so auxiliary two is on. Let's check our voltage. 240, 240. Sorry about the airplane guys. Probably gonna have to leave on. There it is. So that switch we're gonna have to keep on. I'm not gonna rewire it uh, so that now he's gonna be able to function it every time. So that switch is gonna remain on over there by the blower. Um, so that's working. And then let's see if we got our heat pump. take this off the little stand as we move around we have display on the heat pump I may have to go inside and uh, change the settings inside of the heat pump to let it know that it's being controlled by the automation system uh, we'll go through that a little bit later we're just checking to make sure we have all the voltage and then here we have our GFCI which is our uh, receptacle that we have down over there. And here we have our uh, water pump that's here controlled on the side. Let's make sure this is running. There it is. So we got everything there operating the way it should. We're gonna leave this on auto for now uh, and then turn off our breaker at this moment. Uh, and this is our last leg uh, for a pool light. Uh, what I did overlook on the system, uh, since he had the Intermatic uh, load center that came with the transformer, um, overlooked that part of the job. We're gonna have to come back and install a transformer here separately on the side and uh, wire up our pool lights, which is these cables right here on the side and uh, give it the power from the 20 amper that we have here wired up to here that's no big deal we could do that at another time and then we're going to wire that up into the relay system of uh, aux one so that he can be able to operate the um the pool lights from the automation system now what we're going to do since we have everything here is functioning all of our equipment is functioning properly then last thing we're going to have to do is go ahead and install the the antenna go inside of the 
client's home, install the protocol and the transceiver uh, through the whole entire network that the client has here. So we're gonna go and shut everything down. Okay, and then we're gonna get that last part done.